now. Hi everyone, I'm Casey. Welcome back to Epilepsy Thursdays. And as always, accept epilepsy. So throughout the month of November, we have been speaking about experiences. We have already spoken about uh, two of them. One was a caregiver and my experience with epilepsy, which was um, a bit too long of an interview or, or rather a monologue, <laughs> monologue that I bored all of you with. And without Insta Gourmet, uh, they have two product lines. One is just sprinkle product line and one is healthy shelly. Without Insta Gourmet, we wouldn't have been able to do this entire month. So a big shout out to Insta Gourmet. You can check out their products. The description uh, box will have their link. So do go out and check check their products out. If you buy it, if you don't buy it, it's all up to you. But if you decide to buy it, do not forget to use my special code that is EWQ uh, to get a 40 rupees off on the products that you buy. So yes, today our guest is Ms. Tori Robinson who hails from uh, the UK and she's the founder and the CEO, though she doesn't like the term CEO because it makes her feel like a boss lady, but technically she is a boss lady. <laughs> Welcome to her. Thank you. Thanks for having me here. Um, yes, uh, I'm Tori Robinson. Thank you for letting me be here. It's great to talk to you. Yeah, we have a lot to talk, so I am uh, going to get right into it. First and foremost, the audience, uh, I have known Tori, I mean, the two of us have known each other for almost four or more years now, so... Crazy. Yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> so if we have some uh, comfortable chat amongst us, then don't weird yourselves out because, you know, she's a friend more than just the person that I'm interviewing. Uh, we did meet on Instagram, which is so tinderish, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> so let's get on into it. I mean, I know this, but for our audience, at what age were you diagnosed? I was diagnosed when I was 10 years old. Um, that's when my... Uh, when it was noticed that I was behaving a little more strangely than normal, but I recall having seizures many years before that. Uh, what do you mean strangely? Like, how would you define strangely? If you oh, know. well, uh, I, I would say more strange than normal, because what is normal? But, uh, exactly, um, so, like, uh, what is normal? <laughs> right, what is normal? There is no such thing. And the very <laughs> idea of normal is just boring. But, um, but in this case, I would uh, far have preferred to, of course, not have epilepsy, but um, yes, my parents saw me staring into space and not talking to them. So they likely witnessed either an absent seizure absent or a type, yeah, which is a type of focal seizure. Um, yeah, it was, a, it was a type of focal seizure they witnessed. Obviously, I don't know which, which type, but that's what I know. And then I had a um, EEG when I eventually got to the neurologist and the EEG showed no abnormalities at all, which is very common with EEGs. But, okay. but, I, was, but I was diagnosed based on the description of my seizures. So uh, uh, all, all of the people who are watching this video already know how EEGs can not be held as, uh, you know, as a benchmark when it comes to brain mapping because uh, they actually don't tell you much about it. You can find up there, test done for epilepsy, uh, the suggestion uh, link, and you will know why, uh, like, why do me or even Tori is saying that EGs can be normal <laughs> as if it's a test or abnormal and it cannot be held as a benchmark so can i just uh, mention though so can i just could i just mention regarding eegs yes, though yes, although yes. they are ultra frustrating if they show no abnormalities it's the only child time you want to have a seizure right um to show abnormalities they are like for many they are absolutely incredible um like for instance i mean this is later in the story but i have had a seizure during uh 
and EG, which was amazing to have. I needed that. So to tell the neurologist, the neurosurgeon, neurophysiologist more about. So it's just it's just frustrating that it, it can't tell you everything. Oh, yes. I mean, you know, when I went for my video, EG, the, the latest one, the latest one, how we have started, you know, calling it the latest one. <laughs> Indeed, indeed. Uh, yeah, I mean, that was the time when I was struggling to have a seizure and uh, like it took me three days to have a seizure and I was like, why God, why? Why can't you? Do <laughs> yeah, the only time you want it, right? The only time when you want it, but you don't. So, um, as you said, your uh, parents uh, thought you were acting strange. Um, did you feel that you were being strange or or did you like not realize it? And no, at the time. You, I, I have a follow-up question to that as well. Sorry. <laughs> and when you now say that you started experiencing seizures way before they kind of noticed uh, the strange behavior. I wouldn't call it strange, but since you're calling it strange, I'm... Yeah, whatever you want to call it. Yeah, I mean, it wasn't exactly regular behavior of a child, so... Because The way you were previously, impact. let's just yeah. say the way you and were afterwards. previously. And afterwards. Yeah. yeah. So, um, A, did you uh, realize it? or And B, now that you say that uh, you had started experiencing seizures way before that, uh, how do you know that you were experiencing seizures before that? Like, I know, I'm, I understand it's in retrospect, but uh, how, how? Can you define us, please? Can you yeah, sure. Me? Well, at the, at the time, um, so years beforehand, I didn't know that I was experiencing seizures because I it was just me. It was just, I would call them my funny feelings. And actually, for years, even after diagnosis, I would call them funny feelings. Um, so, um, and I actually used to quite like my seizures because uh, the type of focal seizure I was ha having, they would like take me away from the stress, like, you know, peace man, I was like, whoa. And yeah, the look of shock on your face, I know. And, and do you know what? Many more people I suggest may have this, a similar feeling to I, um, as in they can take you away from the stress. It's just that it's not the trendy thing to say because of course, most seizures are not like that at all. It, and actually for another um, video, um, I don't know if you've touched on them yet, um, ecstatic seizures, have you touched on those? No, I haven't, I haven't. I'll be doing that in the next year, the, like different Ooh. types of seizures. Yeah, and different types um, of epilepsies. I'll be doing that next year. So I haven't touched that topic, but, but we, you, can, you can go ahead and talk about it right now. Like, oh, well, no, I, I, I've, I've never had an ecstatic seizure. All I'm saying is well, that it just you say me... that, But when you say that, you know, you felt at peace and like, you know, this is something that even I didn't know. This is the first time that I'm hearing it, which is why I was shocked. I mean, that shock reaction was genuine, you guys. Because yeah. this is the first time that we have spoken about this, which is so weird. Uh, but... But, uh, but I was going to say, like, I, it was... So it depends upon a person's circumstance. So I was quite stressed out in life in general, even as a child. So just like having the seizure where I'm, nobody can see that I'm having it, if you like, as in I don't, didn't have any shaking or anything. It didn't go into tonic or tonic clonic. It was just like I was staring in space. I, the first seizure I remember, I was at primary school and it was just after PE or physical education and I was getting changed. And then I was like, whoa. <sighs> And then I started walking during the seizure while I was not fully conscious. And I almost walked into the classroom in my underwear. And luckily I came out of the seizure before that happened. But that's the first sort of thing, I, the first one I remember looking back, like, gosh, that, I, yeah, I was so lucky not to do that. But I didn't tell anybody about these things because I didn't know it was not normal. And because I wasn't shaking, people didn't notice. And what's really common, we know, right, is that, you know, people might think, oh, that kid's just like daydreaming or staring into space. It's, it's Perhaps true. that was my case. I don't know. Um, but yeah, and I so I because I didn't know they were abnormal or not abnormal. I hate that term, actually, because I didn't know that it was not a regular type of brain activity. Nobody told me that they could see I was behaving in a different way. And um, so why would I be funny about it? Exactly. You know? I mean, so. Um... I mean, come on. I mean, even till date, people 
after seizures go unnoticed there are so many teachers out there if there are any teachers who are watching this like not every daydreaming is a daydream a you Sometimes might be boring just be boring <laughs> <laughs> i would imagine this <laughs> Be like, dude, seriously, like this is really dull. Could you just, you know? <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, so it just make sure that, like, you know, if you see a person daydreaming, if you think it's daydreaming, it might your child might not just be daydreaming. So I'm just going yeah. to translate this in Hindi cool. for people sure. who, yeah. Uh, so uh. ये सॉरी रॉबिंसन है जिनको जिनका डायग्नोसिस वो जब दस साल की थी तभी हुआ था और ये उनको तभी नहीं पता चला कि उनको एपिलेप्सी है डायग्नोसिस दस साल में हुआ लेकिन उसके पहले से ही उनके सीजर्स शुरू हो गए थे अभी जाके जब वो उन सब चीजों के बारे में सोचती हैं तो उनको ख्याल आता है जैसे मैंने भी आपको बताया था कि अब जब हम सोचते हैं उसके बारे में तभी हमें पता चलता है और उनके पेरेंट्स ने ये देखा कि ये पहले जैसे बिहेव करती थी वैसे अभी बिहेव नहीं कर रही है थोड़ी सी अलग बिहेव कर रही हैं जिसकी वजह से उन्होंने ईजी कराया और ईजी के बारे में हम तो सब जानते हैं पहले ही लिंक चली गई है तो आप देख सकते हैं और डिस्क्रिप्शन बॉक्स में भी मैं ये लिंक जरूर दूंगी बिफोर मूविंग ऑन बिग शार इंस्टाग्राम में येर अगेन देर लिंक विल बी इन द डिस्क्रिप्शन बॉक्स इनके प्रोडक्ट अवेलेबल है ऑन फ्लिपकार्ट एमेजॉन पेटीएम मॉल स्नैपील एंड बिग बास्केट और मेरा अगर स्पेशल कोड आप इस्तेमाल करते हैं जो कि है ई डब्ल्यू क्यू एप्लेप्सी वॉरियर क्वीन ई डब्ल्यू क्यू तो आपको चालीस रुपए ऑफ मिल सकते हैं सो मूविंग ऑन सॉरी when you were finally diagnosed right like when the doctors told you or the health care personnel told you that you have epilepsy what did your 10 year old brain uh, you know what did it, what did your 10 year old brain think how did you take the news did could you understand it would could you not understand it because i mean the awareness regarding epilepsy is Still not that great compared to how it was in the nineties. I mean, it's like, I mean, it's still not that great. So, like in the nineties, it was like bad. I I obviously may will have known people, other people with epilepsy, but I didn't know that they had epilepsy, and they will not have known that I had epilepsy. Um, and but upon diagnosis, I was like, whatever. Why would I didn't know of any? I had not heard any bad things about it that I recall anyway, and so it's just like okay, your funny feelings are seizures. Um, I was speaking to a pediatric neurologist, and he said, yeah, so that's what this is. You have epilepsy. He was a very nice man, and he said you need to take these pills. It wasn't the diagnosis that was a problem for me. The first issue for me was the side effects of the drugs. It was horrific. Uh, uh, what What were the side effects that you, um, if you do, if you're comfortable answering? Yeah, sure. Before, what yeah, were the side I, effects uh, that you, like your side effects start, like it, did the medicine started affecting you uh, since you were a child? Oh and gosh, then, of course, yes. Overnight, overnight they affected me. So I went from being relatively. Uh, I would have considered myself to be relatively intelligent, but my cognitive function went down instantly. Um, now, it, just to put it in, you know, layman's terms, it makes complete sense. If you're taking a drug that is supposed to reduce your brain activity, well, these drugs can't just hit one part of your brain. I mean, there's a study in Australia for something else actually about which um, Mark Cook, if you've got time after to check that, but at least generally speaking, the drugs that people take is going to affect your whole brain, which means it's of course going to affect the cognitive function to a degree. Some people a lot, some people not so much. Um, so it did myself significantly. Um, and I was just tired all the time. And I, it was so hard to get up. It, I was exhausted. I even fell asleep at school once that we know of. Um, you know, just like falling asleep on the bus to school on the way back from school. And then I had to make the decision 
basically, was I going to have or attempt to have any sort of social life or was I going to try and study at school? And I chose the latter and that was basically my life. Um, so, yeah. And, and at the same time, I was experiencing um, depression um, and that wasn't identified either. Maybe that's another topic, mental health issues. Um, but we, we, we are going drugs. to get to that. We are going to get to that. Yeah. <laughs> the mental health issues can be, be um, also impacted or, some, or sometimes even created by the drugs. And I have no idea if that played a part because I had mental health issues prior to diagnosis. So, uh, yeah. But, but that was the impact of the drugs and the drugs didn't stop my seizures. Now, I'm not saying this, I'm to put anybody off. I'm part of the 30% of people with refractory epilepsy, you know what that's like, but most people will have drugs controlling their seizures, which is amazing. And some people hardly have any side effects, which is amazing. So I'm not at all envious, yeah. but that was my situation. Yeah, yeah. so um, I'm just going to translate it yet again. Sure. Uh, so in case of side effects, jo shuru ho gaye, medicine safe, wo turant shuru ho gaye. सबकेमरीज Yes, memory issues. के बारे में तो या yeah, I've spoken a lot about memory issues. Uh, memory issues या फिर थकान उन्होंने तो वैसे भी कहा कि वो सोती रहती थी school में भी सोती रह सोई थी एक बार bus में school आने जाने के school bus में वो हमेशा अच्छा की हुई सोई हुई रहती थी ये तो हम सब जानते हैं but इतना ही उन्होंने कहा है. Yeah, I mean at least she slept in school just once. I used to sleep. every single time especially during <laughs> the classes <laughs> a big shout out to instagram me i'm holding their dalia which is a porridge um a multi grain porridge and the recipe is right behind it and it is the best way to uh, you know if you are all by yourself taking care of yourself you don't have a caregiver like right beside you and uh, there are times when a person might not be with you even if you are living with a huge family aise bhi ho sakta hai ki aap bahut badi family joint family mein reh rahe hain par kabhi kabhar aise ho sakta hai ki yadi aapko seizure raha hai aur aap akele ho aur khana pakana hai you are hungry you want to eat something this is the best thing you can do because it takes some like 15 to 20 minutes and it's the less amount of effort ever i have done that So yes, um, you should definitely go and check it out, and don't forget to use my code EWCU40 for 40 rupees off. <laughs> so, um, what type of epilepsy do you have? Are you aware of it? Do you know this? I mean, I know you know this. So, <laughs> so, so I have oh. focal. I have a focal epilepsy. Um, and that means that uh, my, the, my seizures start in one part of my brain, um, but many with focal epilepsy, it doesn't necessarily mean that you have focal seizures alone. You can also have secondary generalized um, tonic or tonic chronic seizures, um, and that's that's me as well. Although sometimes I feel a bit funny saying that because because of changes to my lifestyle I've made. um and the contribution significant contribution of the surgery i've had which is another bit um i haven't now we'll be had getting to that in, we will just under we'll 3 getting, years but yeah we'll be getting to surgery don't worry so sure. uh but you have still experienced focal seizures or or and, and or well, yeah. generalized seizures yeah but not of tonic clonic in three years. yeah 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 generalized tonic clonic yes I hope it continues that way. No, no, no. I'm saying I, I have. So, like, I do. As in, so I've had several since my surgery. Yes, general tonic clonics. Oh, you did. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, so, uh, which part of your brain is it? Like, what is so the focal area? So, it's so the focal starts in my left temporal lobe, 
I don't have much of my left temporal lobe left, but there's still a little bit playing around. And, um, and then if it's, and if my brain is really trying to annoy me to say the least, then it will spread to the whole of my brain. And that will be the secondary generalized tonic tonic. So in the focal point or the focal area, just say, I have told you that the seizure is the start of the seizure. The focal area is the start of the focal point nahi keh sakte because it's not just one point it's an area of your brain so inka fo inke focal area hai left temporal lobe so humne pehle bhi bataya tha alag alag lobes ke bare mein baat ki thi temporal extra temporal or uh, you know all three uh, different types of brains and everything and uska uski link aapko upar suggestion links mein nazar aa rahi hogi so do check that out. So um, talking about surgery. Uh, so yes. <laughs> Shall I? I'm just gonna. Do you want me to let the blind down? You can't see me. That might be a good thing. Do you want me to let the oh, blind yeah. down or not? Yes, please. Yes, please. So पीछे उनकी काफी light आ रही थी. So उन्होंने shade नीचे कर दी है. And we are back because <laughs> she was actually kind of the lighting wasn't that good. And we all know how the lighting works. <laughs> so yes, uh, we were talking about the surgery. So uh, what was in your frontal lobe before they took that part out? <laughs> temporal lobe, but sorry. It, I have yeah. a problem with my frontal lobe. <laughs> temporal yeah. lobe. So the problem with my left temporal lobe was I had sclerosis, which is the medical term for basically mucked up bit of brain. It's like scar tissue. And we know that temporal lobe epilepsy is like the most common form of epilepsy. So it's nothing new. And um, when I, so I went into a hospital to have what you mentioned before, video telemetry. And the first time I had it, a bit like you as well, I was like, so relaxed, I couldn't have a seizure. And I'm like, come on, this is the only time I want one, come on. So that didn't work. But then I went back in a few months later, and I guess because I was so stressed that I was not going to have one. And they did reduce my drugs a little bit further. Um, I did have a tonic clinic, um, which was great um, because not only could they then, um, well, they could see it on camera, but the EEGs in the right place they could say, okay, this is where this is where her seizures start and then they right. spread. So it was that was brilliant. So um in ke jo temporal lobe tha, temporal lobe me uh, simple term me bataya jaye, to scar tissues, yani uh pehle bhi aapko bataya tha, tissue uh ke baare mein kaise tissues pe uh, हल्के हमारे जो अंदर की मांसपेशियां होती हैं उनमें कैसे इंजरी हो सकती है चाहे वो बर्थ के टाइम हो या फिर बाद में गिर गिरने से पड़ने से कुछ भी हो सकता है इसकी वजह से इंजरी भी हो सकती है और साथ भी रह सकते हैं इनका वैसे नहीं था पर इनके टेंपरल लोब में लेफ्ट टेंपरल लोब में स्कार टिश्यू थे जो कि सर्जरी के बाद निकाले गए हैं but you still have uh, a certain part of it left, right? A little bit. I have a little bit left. They took away the majority, but the reason that a little bit is left was because, at least at the time, it would have been too dangerous to remove all of it because of the connection to the other pieces of tissue. So, um, yeah, and it, and it likely would have negatively impacted my sight. I do have one tiny dot or like area that I cannot see in. And I didn't find this out until a year or two years ago um, because it's the rest of my, my brain makes up for that little gap. But I just found it out from the optician. So I was like, God, that's really cool. And it's very cool that at the time they did not, the surgeon did not remove the rest of the load because then I would have been a bit stuffed visually. So, uh, baby, but, uh, yeah, uh, but before I translate that in Hindi, many of the people, uh, you know, are scared of getting a surgery done. Mm. Uh, and or because they think that, you know, especially an intrusive 
uh, intense intrusive surgery uh, can be very, I'm using simple layman terms, okay, so that mm -hmm. people understand. Uh, mm -hmm. Can be like, you know, it, it's looked upon as extremely dangerous as to why human tendency, we just directly jump on to the worst case scenario possible and we do not look at the people who have had successful surgeries, but we count those one percent or how many have a percent of surgeries which have gone bad. Uh, so there are so many people out there who are scared of getting a surgery. And yeah. uh, they think that there won't be new neural pathways that our brains might end up developing. So just a few words regarding that. So, okay, here's, I'm a stranger's answer, no doubt, but when I was uh, approved for surgery, I was so excited, okay, because the more you learn about the human brain, it's, a, it's like there are more neural connections in the human brain than there are stars in, in the galaxy. Like, in the galaxy, right. Yeah, it is such a complex organ, and it's more, especially the younger you are, the more flexible it is in terms of learning new things. And indeed, look, any uh, neurologists, any surgeons would not remove part of your brain if the risks, did, uh, sorry, if the benefits, potential benefits did not outweigh the risks. And then in addition to that, you have to, so that's one positive thing, right? And then you need to look at, okay, so how great is my life while I'm having uncontrolled seizures? And how, at what risk am I of dying from sudden unexpected death from epilepsy or from injury? Yeah. Now, yeah, I was at very high risk of student, very high. I was having lots of um, accidents and injuries, like breaking my bone into so many pieces. I needed surgeries on that. Um, I fell on a railway line and almost got run over by a train. Um, all of this stuff is because of seizures. And I was constantly exhausted from drugs, but also the stresses that come with the epilepsy. Um, the, it, like, and then I know that the risk of the surgery, in my case, is so low, so low. And I'm just like, wow. And then also because I could read up on the latest, you know, science um, or neuroscience uh, publications. And I trusted these you know, trusted my surgeon, I trusted the staff, because I understood it a bit more. And this is, I think, one of the biggest things that can really help people who are being considered for surgery, is just to learn a little bit about it. You don't have to be a clinician or doctor yourself, but just get to know the people who are going to be doing the surgery. Read a little bit about it. Don't just read the negative stuff that you see in the press, like which is like politics or whatever you know and do you know what I compare this to actually is you know there's always stuff in the news about how the world is going to end and you must be scared of this this and this and we have to manage you know manage. what we read manage. you cannot you cannot just believe one person you have to do your own research at the end of the day exactly okay. and if you right sorry, now uh sorry you continue and then I'll, I'll just add on. Oh, okay. Uh, I can't even remember what I was going to say now. Oh, yes. And that is, and you know, this applies, I think, um, to carers, mums and dads and, you know, siblings of people with epilepsy. They can often be more fearful than the people who had it because they're worried they're going to lose their loved one or that the surgery will take away part of who their child or the one they love oh. is. And look, you know, there are very, not all surgeries are the same that I, I know of children who have had half their brain removed because of epilepsy. And it's amazing. So obviously the surgeon, the neurologist will not be involved in this or do it at all if the risks did, um, were higher it's than the potential with, benefits. Yes, yes. I mean, and if the benefits don't outweigh the uh, cons, if the pros are lesser than the cons, then uh, neurologists will not, will not uh, advice a surgery but but there is a flip side to it as well uh, yeah. i mean we are two sides of the same coin right here in front of you guys yeah. one uh, both of us were approved for a surgery i finally found my focal area she got a surgery done and i'm against my surgery 
because mine is in the frontal uh, right frontal lobe and the surgery is not going to help me much right so and it's Except, yeah it's not it's, yes i mean yeah and also another great example i had a friend from america the united states from america and she had laser surgery so instead of having part of her brain removed like you know taking it out it was like a pen that would pen, zap it yeah, yeah. and it was not effective for her and then so she was and then she was offered um a lobectomy or resection similar to mine and she said no even though she has lots of seizures and she's at high risk and her reason is um or was that she is an artist and if this piece of her brain was removed it would take away her life that's what it would feel like to her it would take away what she uses for income what she does for pleasure she said i just can't do it and then another example is like lots of um especially young people say that they are suitable for surgery before right, and they're 17 um and then they'll say do you know what i'm not doing it right now because i want to pass my exams at school let me do that first or let me go to university first then i'll come back and reconsider it so it's very different for every single person. Yes, because I that is one of my reasons as well. Me being an artist and not just like, you know, uh, uh, not just completely devoted like you or when it comes to epilepsy research and talking about epilepsy, you're like 100% there. I'm still not there. Don't leave my plants out. Don't leave my plants out. <laughs> that she is oh by the way she i call her a woodland nymph seriously well i haven't heard that one before <laughs> oh come on seriously i've called you a woodland nymph because you're like a plant whisperer that's it plant whisperer that's what you normally say yeah <laughs> yes because <laughs> The name part just sounds very weird, so I call you the Oh, uh, I don't mind that. And But what is interesting, <laughs> though, is, hang on, but, and this just shows, again, how different people are, after um, surgery, despite the load removed, would have indicated that this would not happen, my art side grew and improved. So I've become better at playing the piano. I show art in, in actually in my plants to a degree. Um, I do lots of different art things that I never did before. Now, this could be impacted by, you know, different, you know, levels of quality of life and making time for it. But changing your lifestyle do... as well. So, like, and that's a huge topic. To as, yeah. That's just, yeah. And that's, that's a completely different topic as yeah. well. Yeah. Uh, but uh, it can also go like, you know, your artistic uh, side grew. But for people like me or uh, your friend that you spoke of, it, it might not, it might just decrease and we might just end up being nothing. Because when I asked my ask the neurosurgeon as to what are the pros, what exactly would yes. my life be? Because yes. I'm not at a high risk of flu death. I'm at the risk of dying as any other Tom, Dick and Harry. Right. So, uh, you know you were at an extremely high risk so it was like if i am going to die in suda by my as well like you know get a surgery done if i was at that stage even i would have done the same thing but i'm not so i asked the neuro neurosurgeon as to uh, like give me one pro like convince me one thing that will make me go for the surgery because surgeries don't they are they don't cost peanuts they are like a huge amount of money uh and he, he the only thing that he could come up with was you will get to drive and i'm like i stay in india i am 34 going on 35 and there is no way under the sky which is going to make me learn how to drive at this age just a chauffeur, <laughs> yeah, just to be the official liquor chauffeur because all my friends will be like, you know, you're the designated driver from henceforth because we have been doing that for you for so many years. Totally. <laughs> like, yes, so he couldn't convince me. So people out there, if 
you know, before going to the surgery, so going for any kind of surgery, not just a brain surgery, but any surgery, do weigh the pros and cons on your own. Well, yes and no. Sorry, I just had to interrupt there. Yes, do, do that on your own, but I think also seek guidance in what you classify as good research, because... I think lots of us will just Google something and trust the first thing that comes up. And that is very, very dangerous. So don't just do your own research. Ask accredited individuals. So people who have done research like yours before, and that could include your doctor. It could include a member of your family, but often not, not to be funny, but often, no, you know, but, if you don't understand uh, it, your family often doesn't either. Uh, uh, by research, again, correction. By research, I did not mean Google. Google Baba, aapka research nahi ho sakta because Google leads you from a simple pimple to cancer, whereas you have had nothing but just, um, you know, a small dot on your face. Yeah, and actually to help with this, to help with this on Epilepsy Sparks, I've got a page on that website, epilepsysparks.com. We are going to get, wait, 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 hold oh, on. No, 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 I know that, but, but it's, sorry, it's just totally relevant to this because it's all oh, okay. about research um, and accredited journals that you can read um, because this is so important. Now, um, often they will just have like all these long words that none of us understand unless we work in medicine, but don't worry, there are, uh, there are alternatives that we can understand. And again, the more you learn, the more familiar you get with the terminology. Yes, uh, so uh, I'm just going to transfer it everything in Hindi. So, uh, इन्होंने सर्जरी कराई उनकी सर्जरी हो गई हालांकि जैसे आपको पता है कि हम दोनों एक ही कॉइन की दो अलग अलग बाजुएं हैं इन्होंने सर्जरी कराई मैंने सर्जरी नहीं कराई दोनों को ऑप्शन दिया गया था सर्जरी का आ, इनकी केस जैसे कि हमने टू डेथ सर एन अनएक्सपेक्टेड डेथ इन और ड्यू टू एपिलेप्सी इसके बारे में हमने काफी बार बातें की है काफी बार मैंने आपको बताया भी है कि इट इज एक्सट्रीमली सीरियस और इसको ऐसी हंसी मजाक में नहीं ले जा सकती इसका मतलब ये नहीं है कि सब हर एक कोई सूरत में मरने वाला है इट्स नॉट एज अच एंड एवरी पर्सन इज गोइंग टू डाई इन सूरत यू डोंट है नॉट लिव योर लाइफ बट इनकी लाइफ जो थी वो थोड़ी सी हाई रिस्क खतरे में थी तो सर्जरी कराना इनके लिए काफी ज्यादा जरूरी था आ, मेरे केस में ऐसा नहीं है क्योंकि मेरे सूरत के चांसेस काफी कम है मैं किसी भी इंसान की तरह जो राह चलते इंसान को सडनली कार्डिया कर के कोई भी मर सकता है वैसे ही मैं भी मर सकती हूँ या फिर मैं बूढ़ी होके मरूंगी ऐसे मेरे केस में है प्लस मेरा फ्रंटल लोब है इनका टेम्पर लोब था राइट लेफ्ट एवरीथिंग इज लाइक व्हेन आई एम जस्ट टॉकिंग अबाउट इट आई लाइक वी रियली आर टू साइड्स ऑफ ओ दे माइट बी ऑन द सेम साइड यू नो इट्स लाइक या सो सॉरी तो इनके केस में ऐसा था इन्होंने न्यूरोलॉजिस्ट से बात की थैंकफुली इनके न्यूरोलॉजिस्ट इनको अच्छा गाइड कर पाए मैंने जब मैंने न्यूरो सर्जन से अपनी बात की आ, मैंने उनको पूछा कि जब मुझे बताइए आप कन्वेंस कीजिए मुझे कि मैंने सर्जरी क्यों करानी है तो मेरे इसमें इतना कुछ था नहीं क्योंकि मेरी लाइफ स्टाइल चेंज नहीं होने वाली थी तो सर्जरी करके कोई फायदा नहीं था तो अब यदि आपको ये ऑप्शन दिया जाए कि सर्जरी आपके लिए ऑप्शन हो सकता है हर एक के लिए सर्जरी पॉसिबल नहीं होती नॉट एवरीवन इज अप्रूव फॉर सर्जरी एंड वाइल दैट आई है आपको ऊपर लिंक नजर आएगी जिसमें मैंने बात की है एज टू सबको सर्जरी का ऑप्शन क्यों नहीं दिया जाता सो गेटिंग अप्रूव फॉर सर्जरी इज इट्स नॉट uh it's not common it's not rare i mean it's somewhere in right. between yeah and not everybody qualifies because you can have seizures starting in different parts of your brain exactly and, yeah so, so and you can always uh, say no yeah you can always say no 
लाइक आई डेट यस एक्सेक्टली एक्सेक्टली तो आप सर्जरी कराने से पहले रिसर्च कीजिए और रिसर्च का मतलब गूगल पे टाइप करना नहीं होता ये मैं पता नहीं कितने बार बोल चुकी हूँ हर एक बार जब भी मैं कहूंगी अगर मुझे कोई एक रुपया भी दे दे तो अब तक मैं करोड़पति बन जाती आई जस्ट सेट दर एवरी सिंगल टाइम दर आई से डू नॉट ट्रस्ट गूगल आई वुड बी अलियन एयर बैन If I get one one penny for it, I would be a millionaire by now. <laughs> so true. So, so true. All of us would. <laughs> uh, so research का मतलब ये होता है अलग अलग doctors के पास जाना, going to different doctors, taking second opinions, third opinions, reading journals. इनका एक epilepsy spark करके website है जिसकी link नीचे description box में है. एंड uh, हम लोग उसके बारे में आगे बात करने वाले हैं और uh, इन्होंने एक ब्लॉग लिखा है जिसमें इन्होंने रिसर्च कैसे करना है या फिर रिसर्च पेपर्स के बारे में उस ब्लॉग में लिखा है सो यस बिफोर वी हैव ऑन अवेक्षा रास टू आर स्पॉन्सर्स एंड सो गॉड मे आई एम होल्डिंग दैट टेरिटरी स्प्रिंग्स एंड चर्ची पाउडर and uh, it is so amazing you can just sprinkle it over your pasta and spaghetti and you're done you don't have to keep on grating your cheese cubes anymore uh, or buy a grated cheese cube just sprinkle it and it's done uh it's available on flipkart amazon snapdeal uh, big basket and ktm mall uh, so do go check them out use my code wq for rupees 40 off so um Yeah, we already covered that. Up, uh, I was going to ask you, are you seizure free now? But we have already covered it. You have refractory seizures, epilepsy. Yeah, seizures. but the important thing is though, I still have far, far fewer seizures than I had before, and I consider my surgery a complete, complete success because my expectations were managed. Um, my life expectancy is significantly higher, longer, whatever we're supposed to say. and you know i have far fewer injuries because i have fewer seizures and less severe ones so um and prior to so i was having a one tonic clonic big seizure per year on average and then i chilled out a bit more and i changed my lifestyle and now it's been two and a half nearly three years since i've had a tonic clonic now i have focal seizures only um but what is interesting is uh about a month ago i had focal status epilepticus aware, aware you know and that was a new thing for me and the reason i'm telling you this is because you know epilepsy just like with the rest of our body our brain can change over time nothing is guaranteed you know so but people need to have their expectations managed by their clinician their doctor the neurologist um which mind it they said they thought I'd be about 60% likely to have no more seizures and I'm like okay cool do it you know so and because my expectations were managed I'm not disappointed I think this is amazing what has happened okay and that's that it's just need, crucial I mean yeah no you uh can you just uh, explain because many people what people think is like uh, a successful surgery is a surgery which will make sure that you will be seizure free or what they right. call epilepsy free i still don't get the epilepsy free term okay I... now look that's like yeah. it's you've got to kind of weigh things up you need to be adult here right so you could say oh i'm only going to be successful in my career if i become a president well no you can be successful in your career if you do something else it's all about what you could you think of and you have to be realistic look at the data available your brain is different to somebody else's we're all completely unique you have a completely different epilepsy and you know don't expect what is not going to happen it's silly so we need to be adults and just like look at what the pros and cons um you know if okay if my neurologist had for instance said to me you your epilepsy is going to be cured which is a ridiculous term in my opinion um and if they epilepsy, uh, he has epilepsy does not have a cure as yet let's just put it that way as yet because yeah. and uh, yeah and i was going to say yeah so and if he had said yeah if he had said that you would have no more seizures i would be disappointed right 
because I would feel, well, I feel I'd be lied to and I would just have not got what I expected. But he said to me, you know, this is the likelihood of no more seizures. You'll still need to take pills after your surgery. I'm like, okay, cool. So just let's just be grown ups and let's be realistic. Exactly. Uh, you know, uh, it's very important, I think, to ask questions to the neurologist and the neurosurgeon, the neurophysiologist, yeah. the neuropsychologist, uh, your psychiatrist, uh, the entire team. And yeah. it, it, it's very important to ask questions, which people do not. So they end up expecting something miraculous. Uh, and write the that? questions before you go to the appointment, because we all forget when we go to the appointment, don't we? Whether it's just... <laughs> random or because we're stressed and we forget or people can be unfortunately sometimes intimidated so they or they're embarrassed to say it there's nothing wrong with any question any question is a good question and don't worry about asking the same question more than once if you have a good neurologist they know how your brain works to, uh, to a large degree so they won't be they won't be upset with you and they won't think that you're less of a person just ask what you you know what you want answers to and if it helps write down those answers too yes very important very very important point that you made here like if i haven't spoken about this point because this this never hit like you know it it never sprung in my head so yes you know a coffee at a point here hey yeah page of media about maybe not आप जब मैंने मैं सिर्फ हमेशा ये कहती रहती हूँ कि सवाल पूछिए सवाल पूछिए पर अभी इन्होंने जो पॉइंट किया वो बहुत ही इम्पोर्टेंट पॉइंट था सवाल लिख के लिख लीजिए कागज पे लिखिए सवाल और लिख के ये सारे सवाल आप न्यूरोलॉजिस्ट न्यूरोसर्जन या न्यूरोफिजियोलॉजिस्ट न्यूरो साइकोलॉजिस्ट साइकाइट्रिस्ट साइकोलॉजिस्ट नॉर्मल साइकोलॉजिस्ट इनको जिन्हों जिनसे आप मिलने जा रहे हैं उनको पूछने से पहले कागज के टुकड़े पे आप सवाल लिखिए ताकि वहां जाके आप भूल ना जाए कोई भी एक सवाल पूछना आपसे छूट ना जाए वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट इट नेवर आई डोंट नो व्हाई इट नेवर हिट लाइक यू नो आई नेवर केम अप दैट आई डिड इट यू फॉरगॉट आई फॉरगॉट हैप्पी ब्रेन नो बट इट नेवर स्ट्रक मी आई आई नेवर रोट डाउन एनी क्वेश्चंस इट नेवर स्ट्रक मी So, um, आपको आप सवाल पूछेंगे तो आपके डॉक्टर्स अभी मैं सबके नाम लेते रहूंगी इफ आई कीप ऑन टेकिंग ईच एंड एवरी हेल्थ केयर पर्सनल देन इट विल टेक अस लाइक एजेस टू फिनिश ऑफ दिस इंटरव्यू सो आई एम नॉट गोना कीप ऑन सेइंग न्यूरोलॉजिस्ट न्यूरोसाइकोलॉजिस्ट न्यूरोसर्जन आई एम जस्ट गोना कॉल हेल्थ केयर पर्सनल दैट्स इट सो अ अ आई फॉरगॉट व्हाट वाज आई आस्किंग Okay, I've got the list in front of me too. Um, we were just going to say, unless we've already covered it, and I mean, no, no, it, 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 it was regarding this topic itself. It was regarding the questionnaire. So keep, okay. uh, do ask the questions because when she, uh, when you ask a question, uh, you will get answers. जैसे इन्होंने पूछा सवाल कि क्या percentage है succession और failure के success हर एक के दृष्टिकोण से अलग अलग होता है. जैसे कि इन्होंने कहा सक्सेस मतलब प्राइम मिनिस्टर होना या प्रेसिडेंट होना ही नहीं होता सक्सेस की तुलना अलग अलग होती है इनके केस में सक्सेशन रेट है क्योंकि इनके टॉनिक्लोनिक सीजर्स कम हो गए हैं पिछले तीन साल से और हाँ उनको अभी भी मेडिसिन खानी पड़ती है फोकल सीजर्स आते हैं जनरलाइज सीजर्स होते हैं पर उसकी कमतरता मतलब ये फ्रीक्वेंसी कम हो गई है Is it right? Has your frequency reduced? Oh yes, significantly, and um, also okay. the the free and especially the frequency of chronic chronic seizures has reduced, and that's very very that's very important. So, uh, जैसे कि मैंने कहा इनकी frequency काफी कम हो चुकी है, तो उनके लिए surgery was a success. Completely not a success. Completely, completely. okay. मेरे इसमें वो सक्सेस नहीं होने वाली थी खाली पैसे जाने वाले थे क्योंकि हाँ मुझे भी दवाइयाँ कंटिन्यू कर, करने वाली थी और आ, बाकी कुछ लाइफस्टाइल में चेंज नहीं होने वाला था सो so, आपको सवाल पूछना बहुत ही जरूरी है क्योंकि मैंने अगर ये सवाल पूछे नहीं होते डॉक्टर्स से तो मुझे वो आंसर्स नहीं मिलते सो इट इज एक्सट्रीमली इम्पोर्टेंट टू आस्क क्वेश्चन यस 
I just have, I think, which is quite a good, another good analogy, and that is, if you are told um, at any age that you have to look for your perfect prince or princess, and they will make all of your life the most amazing thing, and they will do everything for you. This is what the media talks about, to sell you stuff, right? A lot of people yeah. believe this, and they go for the best of the best of the best, or what they consider such. Nobody is that amazing, and you will feel completely and utterly let down, and like your relationship is a failure, right? Or nobody's good enough for you, which is so silly. And so, you know, one has to be realistic and say, well, nobody's perfect, and I'm certainly not perfect. So let's, you know, be more accommodating and manage our expectations. And do not believe in media. Believe in the people who have learned and researched and are professionals because media, I think it's there everywhere that media kind of just turns everything upside down and it's pain. Yeah. So, yeah. sorry, next question. Because we don't have long. I've got like 10 minutes, 12 minutes to go. So, oh no, we have. Uh, so, you were going to talk about mental health. Related yes. to epilepsy and entire vortex. Yeah, okay, cool. So this really deserves a whole um, multiple um, episodes, doesn't it? Mental health with epilepsy. Yes, but we don't um, have that much time. I know, so, yeah. So, you know, so epilepsy and then is... And then I'll talk about it. Once, you're, once you log off, then I'll talk about it. So just, okay, great. Uh, yeah. So in my circumstance, mental health has been a uh, bigger deal than the epilepsy in that... Uh, if you know, I would rather have a tonic chronic seizure every day than feel suicidal, right? Or feel continuously depressed, or you know, and there are lots of people with epilepsy who have who go into psychosis at times. Um, there's a higher rate of schizophrenia amongst people with epilepsy, a much higher rate. So um the brain is nowhere near as simple as many think, and it's um you know, these things, understandably, really, if, even in a general form, come hand in hand. No, not everybody has mental health issues, and that's great. Just like not everybody has the same type of seizures with the same frequency. Um, and if you have fewer, that's great. If you have none at all, that's amazing. But it's just very, very common to have mental health issues. And I've experienced these since I was very, very little. Um, and yeah, so please try not to feel ashamed if you're feeling down, if you're feeling anxious, if you are seeing things that aren't there, the longer you don't recognize these for, and the longer it takes to get treatment or help, the worse things can get. And please know that you are not alone. And that's what research is good for as well, because you will see that so many other people experience something similar. We, we might, let's just have another session regarding mental health as well one of these days, because uh, we do not have time today to get into uh, the depth of it, like, you know. So uh, let's get to the point of epilepsy spark. So what made you, <laughs> as, as I said, it's, it's, it's extremely corny that what spark your... Uh, well, it's like, spark. you know, it's like you've got sparks in your brain, so if you're having a seizure, so, and um, but also sparks induce life. You could think of the Big Bang, maybe, or you know, sparks are exciting. They are energy. So that's how that kind of came about. Um, I started a blog after my surgery because I was just getting frustrated, you know, realizing how little people really know about epilepsy, and especially. And that wasn't which year? That wasn't which year? Sorry, I'm. Um, so I had the surgery in 2013, and I think I started this in maybe uh, 2014, something like that. I can't remember the exact date. Anyway. And so I just started a blog, which was like pretty blunt and to the point and um, with a little bit of dark humor, if that's allowed. And um, it just took off unexpectedly and it became what it is today, which is a place to educate people um, on um, the, not just the causes of epilepsy, but the different types of seizures, um, the yeah, common comorbidities or, you know, seizure illnesses, um, encouraging people to look at research, to get involved. We even have a research involvement page um, and to bridge that gap between clinicians um, or doctors, nurses and us lot, because it's a bit old fashioned, isn't it? There's a bit of, you know, oh, you can't talk to this person, but, you know, and no, that's not how it should be. We should all be communicating more effectively. Um, 
And then I love, you probably guessed already, um, neuroscience, neurology, just learning more about the human brain, even though it takes me a lot longer because of my memory, but I try and do it. Um, sorry, go on. No, but there are so many people who are out there with normal, smart brains uh, mm -hmm. who do not like to learn. So yeah, you are it's not a bit silly, really. Like, so it's yeah, like, it's a bit silly. But I don't really have time for those people, yeah. so yeah, I don't have time yeah. for that. It's a bit silly. So, um, and and then I also started doing public speaking about epilepsy and the mental health issues, and even you know I talk about digestion, um, you know intestinal issues because that's very important. The epilepsy can affect that. It can you know things like your your you know your bones can be affected. It's like the whole package, oh, God, and that's really packages, important. Yes. So, um, yeah, and it's really fun, and uh, I get to meet people like you, because I came over to Mumbai, didn't I, a couple of years ago, we met face to face, which was amazing, and lots of other people from, um, well, there was a family who traveled 800 kilometers to come and meet, which was amazing, and, we might you know, meet again, from... by the way, we might just meet again next year. What do you mean, might? Totally, <laughs> we totally will. And to make, it depends on the... Oh, yeah, at some point. No, at some yeah, point we will meet again, but yeah. No, so, after the uh, pandemic and after we are allowed to travel to different countries, then we might, then we'll move. <laughs> totally. <laughs> yes. So, so yeah, and so that's why I started it, and it's not a charity, because most things are charities, and the reason it's not, it means I can do more, so I have more freedom with the company, and so we don't have to be, you know, totally safe all the time, um, which, which is, you know, it means we can be sort of more open have a little bit of humor sometimes um and that's another thing that's happened with the podcast and the videos so is to so my focus with those is to again bridge that gap between clinicians doctors nurses and us lot so i focus on um interviewing and well really just having chats like we're having um with doctors um, I've got a neurosurgeon lined up. I've already interviewed a neurosurgeon in training um, who's originally from India, actually, who's born in India. Um, so you can I check him out. Was. Yeah. Oh, by um, the way, her podcast and her YouTube channel link will be in the description box below, along with Epilepsy Sparks website as well. Yes. And Tori, and my personal website as well, which is yes. where I can all, all the way. All the way. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but I also want the BBC uh, three interview of yours. Uh, oh yes, of course. Yes. It's yes. called Things Not to Say to Somebody with Epilepsy. Yes, I want that mm -hmm. interview link as well because there are so many things that people don't uh, necessarily know. So um, uh, I'm just like you know, yeah, like go going faster, and then I'll be translating everything that you spoke in Hindi. Oh okay. Mm -hmm. So um. What what was that um, thing that made you transform yourself from being just another uh, person with epilepsy to this person who is uh, learning and researching and uh, documenting and interviewing and writing blogs and starting podcasts, uh, which uh, like you know, uh, bridging the gap between uh, the healthcare personnel and the normal public. Uh, so I guess, well, personal curiosity, um, personal desire to learn, but um, I would say primarily frustration at the unnecessary um, ignorance of many of us and uh, of the, the classism that still exists in many um, parts of the world. Um, in regards to, well, people in medicine and people in research academia, and then only the patients, that's very silly. Um, and I'm lucky, I, I grew up traveling the world. So I, I'd seen like lots of people from different cultures before. And so I had some inkling of um, how things might be different in different countries. But honestly, in, in the UK, people presume that, you know, well, you're a developed country and that, you know, people, would understand epilepsy and it's really not the case you know like most people don't have insight into it and not because you know they're horrible it's just that people don't really talk about it um and i just think that that's really silly because it's so interesting 
And, yes. and I also recognize that, you know, in order for um, treatments, um, preventative measures even to improve, we need more funding. And in order to get more funding, we need um, uh, government um, input. Yes. And then so I started looking at statistics and it's been proven that the, the better an individual's health, the more they can contribute to society, at least in financial terms. And that's what a lot of people care about, right? So, you know, uh, government leaders, politicians, etc., all over the world need to recognize that even if they don't really care about us, in terms of finance, finance. it's really, going really to benefit them if they help us and help families as well so that's kind of that's like my purpose really is to help others live a better life and work towards a little bit better equality i think i think that problem is there in every country whether it's developed or underdeveloped or developing like forever india is like developing forever i don't know how many decades it has been that we are still developing <laughs> but uh, yeah, most as you rightly you. said, most <laughs> as you said, uh, rightly said that most of the time. But what also happens is uh, there are people who have a superiority complex, especially in India. I don't know about UK. Uh, some of the doctors, but I think a superiority complex is there. It, it's just inherent as a personality trait, I guess. Uh, not every doctor is that way, but there are some doctors who are like, you know, uh, they speak bigger words and not explain it to the uh, person sitting in front of them. Uh, so the person sitting in front of them saying to that, oh, it's all medical mumbo jumbo and I'm not smart enough to understand that. I think uh, certainly over here, I know things are much, much improved than they used to be, honestly. Um, all the people that I interview are amazing, otherwise I wouldn't interview them. Um, and totally, you know, they're there to make a huge difference to us and recognize that all of the, what we've discussed really, that epilepsy isn't only about seizures. Um, I've, even, I've even been working with people in genetics and they are amazing. They really, like they ask me, how can I help people? What is the priority for us lot? Well, you know, the actual people with the epilepsy. And I've said to one neurologist, I've said it's about going to the toilet and having relationships sometimes for some people. That's how different it is. And that for some people, it's the seizures alone. For some people, it's the mental health. For some people, it's something else. So we need to be looking at the sphere of things and collating that data and that input from people and addressing, you know, these things in different ways, you know? I mean, what you're doing right now is like amazing because uh, I don't know about UK, but in India, there's a huge fight, uh, this cold war, unspoken war between psychiatry and neurology, wherein they should be going hand in hand and moving forward, psychiatrists think differently, neurologists think differently, and they don't actually work together. Uh, yeah, well, there are some wonderful people. But... Take a look at um, Rohit Shankar. Um, he's a wonderful guy and actually originally from India. And he's a neuropsychiatrist. And I interviewed him. And he so he looks at things from both sides. And it's amazing. And, um, it's, uh, yeah, so we... I mean, there are very few people out there. But I think it's, it's, uh, it is, uh, you know, changing. A growing sphere. Yes, it is. As the new blood is coming in, the development, the research, as we spoke, um, that, you know, research is an ever-changing thing. There are always newer things coming up. We might say something today, as you had spoken, uh, that we, which might be totally contradictory to what might happen, like, few years down the line. So, uh, we have spoken about what ep uh, Epilepsy Sparks does. Uh, we, how can epilepsy spark help other people we have spoken about and the link will be in the description box so yes you can go check it out and what are the future plans if you could just like you know share with us regarding epilepsy spark i'd say it's following kind of what i've already mentioned which is to um, improve um, 
degrees of uh, understanding of parts of, uh, yes, the human brain, but also what people go through, the needs of those people. Um, and by people, I mean carers, as well as the individuals with diagnosis. Um, the benefits that actually helping these people will bring to society, which it will. Um, so, uh, yeah, I, I hope to have an even wider audience for both my podcast and, and, and the video, but also for Epilepsy Sparks, because it's really exciting stuff to learn. Um, and I hope that more people are able to, rather than only think about their epilepsy, think about who they actually really are and um, that recognise that epilepsy affects their life and it can do significantly. I know of people who have 400 seizures a day, but assuming that that's not you and it's fewer than that, if you have potential to do some other things, which most of us do, follow those things and don't be defined by your epilepsy alone because you're way much more than that. Actually, we need to have another session. We do. We need to talk about mental health with you. We need to talk about uh, plant therapy. Uh, we need to talk about heart attack. Yes, do not show off. You know how jealous I get. I can't even keep my cactus alive. Uh, I'm, going to invite, I'm going to invite you just to take care of my plants. <laughs> I will. I, I will come over and help you have your little garden. But thank you so much. It's been lovely to talk to you in this thank way. You. And um, thank you for translating so much. I, I really appreciate it. I have no idea what you're saying, but thank you. <laughs> no, uh, the, rest, the rest of the last three, four questions, I'll be translating after you leave because you have, you're in a rush. Perfect. Thank you thank so you much, so Casey. Much. See you later. Speak to you soon. Bye. Bye, bye, bye. bye. Welcome back. So, uh, it go, uh, just but I've been see a lot of meetings. We are going to see how to go down a bit. So, I've been up to the Tane Valley who are translate Tane Valley who uh, Jojo Cheese, many fellow translate Nehi, many he kept by. Uh, so, Han say, uh, last translation, ha, Hanji. Uh, yeah, both seizure free hai Nehi hai. उनकी सर्जरी सक्सेसफुल हुई है सक्सेस का टर्म काफी अलग-अलग होता है हर किसी के लिए आ, हम कोई परफेक्ट वर्ल्ड में नहीं जीते कि सबको प्रिंस चार्मिंग ही मिलना है या प्रिंसेस फियोना ही मिलनी तो आ, अपने एक्सपेक्टेशंस रियलिस्टिक रखिए कुछ आ, अलग ये मत रखिए कि भाई आई एम सो सॉरी आई एम इन अ मेस Seriously, I have no idea what's happening with my hair today. So anyway, um, expectations are uh, kuch uh, out of the world. If you don't keep realistic, if you keep it like this, it will be a benefit for everyone. If you think that after doing surgery, I'm not going to be able to do anything. I'm going to be free. होने वाला हूँ या होने वाली हूँ यदि आपके न्यूरोलॉजिस्ट ऐसा कहें तो बात अलग है पर इसका मतलब ये नहीं होता कि वैसे ही होने वाला है तो हाँ जी जरूर चेक कीजिए लिख के जाइए आपके सवाल तो याद रहेंगे ये टॉपिक उन्होंने बहुत ही अच्छा बताया था मेंटल हेल्थ के बारे में हम ज़्यादा बात नहीं कर पाए क्योंकि हमारे पास वक्त कम था पर आ, उनका ये कहना है मतलब आ, मैं भी इससे हालांकि अग्री करती हूँ कि मेंटल हेल्थ खाली एक चीज नहीं होती कि एपिलेप्सी है तो मेंटल हेल्थ का इश्यू होगा या फिर वो साइड इफेक्ट की है दवाइयों की जिसकी वजह से आ, वो इंसान ऐसे तरह से बिहेव कर रहा है नहीं जी ऐसे नहीं होता मेंटल हेल्थ किसी को भी हो सकते हैं और मेंटल हेल्थ समाज आपके साथ कैसे बर्ताव करता है उसके ऊपर भी डिपेंड करता है मैंने एक बार ही पहले भी बताया था अ मेंटल हेल्थ ऑफ पर्सन डज नॉट लाइ विद इन दैट पर्सन ऑल लोन इट लाइज विद द पीपल सराउंड इन दैट पर्सन एज वेल एंड इट इज यू एज human being uh, it is your responsibility to make sure that there is 
a safe environment around people and you don't go around trolling someone online as well because uh, that can affect the person's mental health maine pehle bhi ye kaha tha ki mental health khali ek insaan ke upar depend nahi karta jisko problems hai ya issues hai वो आपके ऊपर भी निर्भर करता है कि आप उस इंसान के साथ कैसे बिहेव करते हैं क्योंकि ये आपकी रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी है कि आप दूसरों के साथ अच्छा बर्ताव करें आप ऑनलाइन खाली दूसरे मतलब आपके लाइफ में रियलिटी में जो आपके साथ है सिर्फ वही लोग नहीं तो ऑनलाइन भी क्योंकि आप जब ऑनलाइन ट्रोलिंग करते हैं तो आपको नहीं पता कि आप साइबर बुलिंग कर रहे हैं या फिर आप किसी के मेंटल हेल्थ के साथ खिलवाड़ कर रहे हैं तो ट्रोलिंग करके भी आप किसी के मेंटल हेल्थ के साथ खिलवाड़ कर सकते हैं तो आ, ये आपके ऊपर निर्भर करता है कि आपको एक अच्छा इंसान बनना है कि एक आ, बुरा इंसान बनना है Uh, आगे बढ़ने से पहले अ बिग शाउट आउट टू इंस्टोर में मैं उनके चेडर चीज पाउडर और तरी तरी पाउडर जस्ट स्प्रिंकल लाइन है उनकी इंस्टोर में जस्ट स्प्रिंकल उसके ये दो पाउडर्स है और ये है फ्रॉम दर लाइन ऑफ प्रोडक्ट फॉर हेल्थी शेवटी पॉरज मल्टीग्रेन पॉरज और आई यूज द पॉरज अ लॉर ऑफ टाइम उनके काफी ज्यादा प्रोडक्ट्स है दे हैव ह्यूज लाइन ऑफ प्रोडक्ट्स वन ऑफ माय ऑल टाइम फेवरेट्स इज मिंस्ड गार्लिक पाउडर एंड सॉरी गार्लिक पाउडर एंड मिंस गार्लिक दे हैव जिंजर पाउडर एज वेल बट आई लव मिंस गार्लिक इट इज आई एम सो लेजी आई वुड से लेजी जस्ट आई थिंक इट्स you know it's a waste of time to keep on peeling each and every garlic and then like you know chopping it and it it, it just takes a lot of time and energy and i'm like if i'm hungry and i want to cook a dish and if more than half of my time is going to go in preparation because of garlic peeling then uh, so minced garlic helps me a lot minced garlic yani uh, lesson jo hota hai wo already के शॉप करके वो होते हैं और जैसे कि हमारे बाजारों में मिलता है वैसे नहीं है ये ये काफी महीनों तक टिकता है बाजार से अगर आप कहते हैं दुकान वाले को या सब्जी वाले को कि मुझे ऐसे काट के दीजिए तो आपको वो तुरंत इस्तेमाल करना पड़ता है फ्रिज में रख के भी महीनों तक आप फ्रिज में नहीं रख सकते लेकिन ये आप रख सकते हैं इनके इनका जो प्रोडक्ट है वो तो अगला सवाल था कि एपिलेप्सी स्पार्क्स ये कब शुरू हुआ और एग्जैक्टली क्या है एपिलेप्सी स्पार्क्स ये उनकी ऑर्गेनाइजेशन है चैरिटी नहीं है उनकी एक ऑर्गेनाइजेशन है जो उन्होंने 2014 में शुरू की उसकी लिंक और उसकी वेबसाइट एपिलेप्सी स्पार्क की वेबसाइट नीचे डिस्क्रिप्शन बॉक्स में दी हुई है तो वो जरूर जाके चेक कीजिए वो ब्लॉग्स है वहाँ पे रिसर्च पेपर्स हैं और उनकी यूट्यूब लिंक सॉरी रॉबिन की यूट्यूब लिंक और एपिलेप्सी स्पार्क जो उनके पॉडकास्ट की लिंक है वो भी मैंने डिस्क्रिप्शन बॉक्स में लिखी हुई है तो जरूर जाके देखिए वो न्यूरोलॉजिस्ट नर्सेस न्यूरो सर्जन जेनेटिक रिसर्च सबके साथ वो इंटरव्यूज करती हैं तो नई नई चीजें आपको सीखने के लिए जरूर मिलेगी यदि आप दिलचस्प ही रखते हैं तो मैं बहुत सारी चीजें उन्होंने उनसे ही सीखती हूँ हाँ बहुत सारी चीजें मैं उनसे सीखती हूँ और अलग अलग एक्सपीरियंस समझ में आते हैं अलग अलग देशों में क्या क्या चल रहा है ये आपको पता चलता है इंडिया में क्या चल रहा है ये मुझे पता है लेकिन मुझे ये नहीं पता कि पूरे दुनिया में क्या चल रहा है क्योंकि एक इंसान को ये पता होना नामुश्किल है तो आपको उस उस देश के लोगों को फॉलो करना या फिर 
उनके साथ बातचीत करना उनसे एक्सचेंज ऑफ नॉलेज ये काफी जरूरी होता है तभी आप खुद को यू नो इफ यू यू विल ओनली ग्रो व्हेन यू हैव एन एक्सचेंज ऑफ नॉलेज व्हिच इज व्हाई आई फॉलो हर एंड शी इज अ डियर फ्रेंड एज वेल बट शी इज अ स्वीट हार्ट सो उनके फ्यूचर प्लान भी एट पास के यही है कि जो अभी वो कर रहे हैं यही कंटिन्यू करना रिसर्च करना रिसर्च का मतलब गूगल बाबा नहीं है रिसर्च का मतलब है अलग अलग प्रोफेशनल लोगों से जाके बातचीत करना और ये सिर्फ डॉक्टर्स या नर्सेस या फिर ऐसे नहीं होते रिसर्चर्स ही होते हैं तो उनके साथ जाके बात करना काफी हद तक जरूरी है जिनोम रिसर्च चालू है अभी इंडिया में भी चालू है तो कैंसर के लिए ऑलरेडी हो चुका है तो अभी आ, ये एपिलेप्स के लिए कैसे कर सकते हैं ये सारी चीजें सीखना इसके लिए किसी जेनेटिक यू नो रिसर्चर से बात करना सीखना ये काफी इंटरेस्टिंग है तो यदि आपको सीखने की उत्सुकता है तो आप जरूर सवाल पूछ सकते हैं मुझे पूछ सकते हैं सवाल या फिर सॉरी को पूछ सकते हैं सवाल और कोई भी सवाल स्टूपेड नहीं होता नॉट इवन अ सिंगल क्वेश्चन स्टूपेड नॉट इवन अ सिंगल क्वेश्चन इज अन इम्पोर्टेंट एवरी क्वेश्चन इज इम्पोर्टेंट Do not think that you are asking silly questions because not even a single question is silly. It's always, always important. Uh, even if you keep repeating the same question over and over, unless until you don't learn and understand about it, that is okay as well. Keep asking the question till you understand and learn about it, and it's. टोटली फाइन मुझे भी आप एक ही सवाल बार बार करें तो भी चलेगा एपिलेप्सी के बारे में मेरे पर्सनल लाइफ के बारे में नहीं तो तो भी चलेगा क्योंकि जब तक आप वो खुद आप नहीं सीख पाते तब तक आप किसी दूसरे को नहीं सिखा पाते और जैसे कि मैंने लास्ट थर्सडे को बताया था कि एक्सेप्ट एपिलेप्सी मूवमेंट क्या है तो उसके लिए हम क्या कर रहे हैं और हम कैसे उसे बढ़ाना चाहते हैं इसके बारे में हमने बात की थी और यही कहा था कि हमें एपिलेप्सी को एक इंक्लूड करना है और उसके लिए हमें लड़ना है और जैसे कि मेरा एम ये है कि एपिलेप्सी को पोलिटिशियंस और हमारे जो नेते हैं सरकार है उनकी और तक पहुंचाना हेल्थ 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 मिनिस्टर की और तक पहुंचाना काफी जरूरी है जो अभी उतने पॉइंट तक पहुंचा नहीं है हाँ सबको पता है एपिलेप्सी क्या है हेल्थ मिनिस्टर को की पर उसको उतना रिकग्निशन नहीं मिला है अब तक तो हमें वो क्रिएट करना है यही टोरी जी ने भी कहा तो हर एक देश में शायद सेम चीज है आप डेवलप्ड हो अंडर डेवलप्ड हो या फिर डेवलपिंग हो सरकार की तरफ आपको आपके प्रॉब्लम्स लेके जाना बहुत ही ज्यादा जरूरी है Before we head on a big, big, big shout out here again to Instagram-e uh, healthy, healthy products of Lion and Instagram-e Just Sprinkle Lion. They have a huge variety of products. उनके काफी सारे products हैं. आप जरूर जाके देखिए. उनकी जो Instagram और Facebook link है, वो मैंने नीचे description box में लिखी हुई है. अगर उनके products Amazon. स्नैपडील फ्लिपकार्ट पेटीएम मॉल और बिग बास्केट पे अवेलेबल है 
यदि आप मेरा कोड इस्तेमाल करते हैं ई डब्ल्यू क्यू तो आपको चालीस रुपए ऑफ मिलेंगे और खरीदिए ना खरीदिए एक बार जाके देख तो लीजिए उनके पास क्या क्या है और क्या क्या नहीं है राइट तो वी आर गोइंग टू टेक अ ब्रेक इन द मंथ ऑफ दिसंबर हम लोग दिसंबर का पूरा महीना ब्रेक लेने वाले हैं एपिलेप्सी के बारे में नहीं लेकिन मेरा जो पॉडकास्ट है लिविंग लाइफ विद कैल्सी गर्ल उसके वीडियो शायद अपलोड हो जाए मैंने सोचा नहीं है अब तक वीडियोस अपलोड करने चाहिए कि नहीं करने चाहिए इंस्टाग्राम पे मैं ये पोल देने वाली हूँ तो आप जरूर बताइए इंस्टाग्राम पे कि मैंने अपने पॉडकास्ट के लविंग लाइफ विद कैल्फी गर्ल जो एपिलेप्सी से बिल्कुल जुड़ा हुआ नहीं है वो लाइफ इन जनरल फिलोसफी ऑफ लाइफ के बारे में है तो क्या मैंने आ, उसके वीडियोस अपलोड करने चाहिए या नहीं सो वी आर टेकिंग ब्रेक इन द मंथ ऑफ दिसंबर एंड वी वॉन्ट बी टॉकिंग अबाउट एपोलक्सी बट डू लेट मी नो इफ यू वुड लाइक टू वॉच द वीडियोज ऑफ माई पॉडकास्ट इज लिविंग लाइफ विद कैल्सी गर्ल एंड द पॉडकास्ट हैज गॉट नथिंग टू डू विद एपोलेप्सी वॉट्स एवर it is uh, regarding the philosophy of life to my eyes uh, the spiritual angle uh, the every every side of life that we are living it it it's just life through my my eyes so would you like to watch those videos or would you rather not do let me know uh, because i'll be taking a poll on instagram so just let me know whether you would like to watch the videos then i'll upload them because i've been pretty shy about uploading them since they are pretty hot potchy <laughs> in nature <laughs> so and uh, it, well i'm starting out i'm learning how to podcast with uh, really meager uh, things that, that that i have i don't have a mic or a headset like the professional podcast podcast says is that a word i don't know uh, so i don't have the equipment the professional equipment uh, so yeah do let me know if you would like to see the mature attempt at podcast thing so next thursday keep fighting stay strong and as always stay happy stay golden